OK, so we're going to use one of the excellent uh, University of Colorado simulations, FET simulations, to look at the photoelectric effect. Uh, this is the apparatus you'd use to, to look at the photoelectric effect. We've got a, an evacuated tube here. Uh, we've got the metal we're looking at. In this case, uh, we, we've got zinc. Uh, we can shine light onto the, the metal surface, and we can change both the intensity of the light and the wavelength of the light. Uh, we can measure the photo current, the current produced, and here we can um, change the potential difference between these two plates to attempt to stop the electrons. Okay, so let's see what happens. So we're shining a red light on the plate at the moment of 50% intensity. As you can see, nothing's happening. So let's reduce the wavelength or increase the frequency of the light, see what happens. So we're going now from red into orange, nothing yet, into yellow, into green, so decreasing the wavelength, into blue, into violet, still some, nothing's happening now. So we're now into ultraviolet, so this is the low frequency ultraviolet light, but you'll notice as we get around here that electrons start to appear. Okay, so there seems to be a threshold frequency um, above which uh, electrons are produced, or a wavelength below which electrons are produced. If we go slightly longer wavelengths, electrons uh, are no longer produced. <clears throat> and if we go above the threshold frequency or below the threshold wavelengths, we have electrons. OK, so there seems to be a minimum frequency to produce these photoelectrons. OK. Um, Let's see what happens if we increase the intensity. Okay, so I'm going to take the intensity. It's on 50% at the moment. Let's see what happens. Okay, so increase the intensity. I hope you can see there that we've got a, a bigger current. So we've got a current there of about 0 0.919. It doesn't say what units are. Let's assume they're amps. Okay, let's go back to 0 0.9. Let's go back to 50%. And you'll see the photo current there is 0 0.46. If we take the intensity down to 10%, uh, yeah, we've got a photo current of 0 0.094. But you notice that, that there's always a current there. Uh, okay, let's go back to 50%. Okay, so we can see there by changing the intensity, we change the photo current, provided we're above the threshold frequency. Okay, now, if you see here, uh, we can now change the potential. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the electrode on the right-hand side slightly negative. Uh, so, of course, it's going to repel the electrons. And we're going to do it until the photo current is zero. Okay? And we call this the stopping potential. Okay, so here you can see it's 3.2 volts. Okay? Now, let's see what happens to that stopping potential if I change the frequency of the light. Okay, so let's actually increase the frequency or decrease the wavelength. Okay? Now, you can see now there is a photo current here because the electrons have got far more energy. It's going to need a bigger voltage to stop it. So, the stopping potential now is going to be... Okay, we need 8 volts to stop those electrons. Okay, let's go the other way. So, let's go down to, um, to there. Okay. And as you can see... Uh, this wavelength, I mean, the stopping potential is 0, 0 0.8 volts. Uh, okay, we're going to discuss in the following slides uh, these results and what the implications are and how we can explain them. Thank you.